Hello, I'm Dr. Tara Tobias, and welcome you all back to this channel. In today's video, we are going to talk about the balance system. Kind of all the little things that are going on behind the scenes, in other words, what's going on inside of your body that allows you to stay upright, how that's impacted by damage to your neurologic system, as well as some things I've identified that can make it more challenging or behaviors that I've identified that might make it more challenging to progress to that next level in your balance confidence, as well as some strategies to help you to get to that next level in your balance confidence. So this is for anyone that's had damage to their nervous system, whether you are in the early stages and maybe you're not even standing yet, all the way up to the advanced stages and maybe you wanna try and get to the point where you feel more comfortable walking on ice and snow and sand and all of those things. The understanding what's going on inside your body is definitely a key factor when selecting the right exercises and to know what to focus on when you're in a situation where you don't feel as confident. But before we dive into all of that, if you're new to this channel and you haven't yet subscribed, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, turn on that notification bell so that you'll get notified every time I upload new videos. And now let's go ahead and dive into the content of today's video. So first, what exactly do I mean by balance or postural stability? Basically, those two terms just mean your ability or the body's ability to maintain the center of mass, your trunk, over your base of support, your feet. In a healthy nervous system that doesn't have any type of neurologic damage, the body's pretty good and efficient at making small adjustments to maintain postural stability in a variety of conditions. Now, how we get to that point and how the body makes those fine adjustments isn't quite so simple. There's a lot of factors involved and there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes that allows the body to seamlessly transition from different terrain, walk across moving objects, such as walking on a boat or a floating dock. There are systems in place that make us pretty good at making the fine adjustments to maintain our body position, our trunk, our center of mass over our base of support when these environmental changes are occurring or any time that our body position over our feet is disrupted. In big picture, it boils down to two big picture things that are going on behind the scenes. There is information going into the brain, input or sensory information, and there is output or there's information leaving the brain to make those adjustments to help us to stay upright. Now the information that's coming into the brain is really coming from three sources. We get information from our eyes, our muscles and our joints, and the vestibular organ in our inner ear. Now the information that's going into the brain from our eyes are things like vertical structures, that help us figure out or maintain our orientation in space. The eyes also can detect depth perception, so finding the borders around objects and differentiating like a foreground object from a background object or how far we are away from an object. For instance, going downstairs, knowing how far your foot is from that next stair down or going down a ramp or a curb, knowing how far that ground is. There's visual information coming in. There's information from our muscles and our joints that are sensing stretch that tell us if we tilt to one side, it might sense the brain will get information that the structures are being stretched on one side of the body. That information helps the brain to know when our body position over our feet might be disrupted, as well as pressure sensors, also extremely important. For instance, there are pressure sensors in our feet. So if we lean to one side, more pressure goes to the outside of our feet. Our sensory system takes that information or sends that information up to the brain, which is extremely valuable. And then as I mentioned, the vestibular organ, which is really a whole specialty in itself, literally, that is a separate specialty within physical therapy. So this is extremely simplified, but basically there are what we call semicircular canals that sit in the inner ear that have little crystals in them, and they're all on a very specific axis. And based on how our head tilts or how our body tilts, it will cause little crystals in that tube or that semicircular canal to start spinning. That information goes to the brain saying these crystals are spinning in the canal that's on this axis. And again, this is very simplified way of telling the brain that the body or the head is tilted, which helps the brain to know where we are in space, or in other words, how the body or center of mass might be disrupted over that base of support. 
So that's the input. Then there's the output, which is information going out to the muscles and the joints in the body and the muscles around the eyes. That output system to the muscles are small movements that we make at our hips, knees, and ankles that help us to adjust our position when the body is disrupted. And then there is an output system to the muscles of the eyes that is extremely important. Those help to stabilize the eyes. So if you think about your eyeball sitting in this socket if there was nothing attaching it to the socket so let's just say the ball was just sitting in that socket every time we moved that ball would just be bouncing around and the eyes can't stabilize on anything which would be very disruptive to our balance. You can probably understand this concept if you've ever watched a video where someone's walking with their phone or their camera and they don't have it on a gimbal or anything to stabilize that camera, like how disruptive that is to your balance just watching a video like that. Imagine that that was the information going into your brain. Very, very disruptive. So when we are moving the eye muscles or that part of the output actually stabilizes our eyes so that they don't do that. So that's another part of the balance system that is extremely important. So I hope all that made sense. I know I went through that kind of fast, but that was a pretty simplified version of how that balance system works. Now this next little piece I'm going to talk about, which I think is really the main reason I made this video, is understanding two terms when it relates to balance or movement in general, and that is feed forward and feed back. I don't think we really articulate this to patients very often in therapy, but I do think it's important to understand what these two terms mean and how valuable and critical these two processes are to our balance systems. So first let's talk about feedback. So feedback is a process that's going on when we're in motion and it's the fine little adjustments that our body makes to execute a movement accurately or to land a hand on a target or to land the foot in the exact spot you want it to land. We get feedback, we make little adjustments to make sure that we actually land that hand or that foot on the desired target. And feedback relies pretty much solely on sensory information. So information coming in from the eyes, that those little stretch receptors in the muscles and those pressure receptors. Now let's talk about feed forward. Feed forward is basically that the there's already a plan in the brain and the brain just executes it. So kind of like a command function. You don't really know all the things that are going on behind the scenes, but if you hit that command function on your computer, stuff just happens. <laughs> I'm acutely aware of this as I learn more function keys or command keys on my computer that poof, stuff just happens. I don't have to use my mouse as frequently to push on a bunch of tabs and open a bunch of stuff. So that is that process. A command function, it's a built-in code that's in our brain already. And basically we just hit that command function and it just happens. Same thing with movement. Feed forward is basically like built-in command functions that you're just pushing buttons. Now, if you did feed forward in isolation without any feedback, movements might be pretty ballistic because there's only one code, right? If you hit command V, there's only one thing that happens, paste. There's really no way to adjust what gets pasted or to change the size of the font or anything like that. It is one code, command V, and one thing happens. If that is the only system we relied on, yes, movements would just be very ballistic. But we also need that feedback system in there to detect errors in how we're executing a movement and make fine adjustments. Now hang in there because I promise you this is all going to make sense and it definitely will impact how you view moving around in your environment regardless of what stage you are at in the recovery process. Generally speaking, when you're shooting for a large target, the brain probably primarily relies on feed forward mechanisms. You don't really need a lot of feedback because you're not looking for a very specific movement. Now, when the target gets smaller, you're probably gonna rely more on feedback because now you need to be a little bit more accurate. You need more of that information coming into the brain while you're en route or while you're executing the movement to make sure that you land on your target. Now. Why do I think that this is so important for a lot of you to understand? And that is because of the number of times that I tell people, regardless of where they're at in the rehab process, to slow 
down. Now I get it, there are a variety of reasons why people move fast. A, you need to get somewhere, so that's one reason. Two, you might have some parts of your brain that affect your ability to slow down, so you might just be a little bit more what we term what you've probably heard if this is you, that you're a little bit impulsive. So that is definitely problematic and could potentially be a reason that you move fast and might not listen to your therapist when they ask you to slow down. But sometimes it's just because you don't understand why you need to slow down or the purpose of slowing down. So here is how this all comes together and why it is so, so important that you slow down. If you are watching this video and you have damage to your neurologic system, there are going to be components of that sensory system, that information coming to the brain that might be a little bit slow. Then there's the processing time of what your brain does with that information and then the motor output, how your body adjusts based on whatever disruption has happened to your body or your center of mass. Slowing down gives you time or your brain time to actually take in that information, process it, detect where the errors are occurring that are throwing your body off center in time for your brain to formulate a response. Now let's go back to the healthy brain again and the healthy nervous system that's pretty automatic. But when you're in rehab or you're recovering from damage to your neurologic system, it might not be automatic yet. And then again, every time you broaden your balance activities or try and progress to the next level, it might not be automatic. So step one or stage one with every new balance activity, so in every stage, there's going to be sub stages. Every time you try and progress to that next level, the first stage is going to be the thinking stage where your brain really does need to take in that information and a lot of processing that takes time needs to happen before it can formulate a solution to make sure that you execute that adjustment correctly. And then phase two would be that more automatic phase. And again, there's two subcategories, phase one, phase two, every time you go up to the next level. So what do you need to do when you're in that first stage is you need to slow down. Where else does this apply? Anytime you are out in the community or out in the public and you go to a new area or an unfamiliar situation, there may be terrain that you would need to navigate that you don't really have that automatic response for yet because maybe you've never done this since you had your stroke or since you had your acute MS exacerbation, things like that. So you, if you slow down, your brain has time to process that. You might not get as anxious and you'll be able to stay calm, let your brain figure out a solution and you can safely navigate that new terrain. That would be a strategy or solution if you're out and you happen to come on something that's new or unfamiliar. This came up actually twice in the last week with two of my patients, and that's kind of, I think, where this is coming from. They're both very high level, and in both cases, two, which is odd for them both to tell me the same exact thing in the same week, that they both had trouble on ramps. And in both cases, these people were in public in a new area. So the anxiety of falling or the fear of falling in front of a lot of people heightens. You probably speed up rather than slow down. That's just in my experience what I, how I see people respond in these situations when they do lack confidence with their balance. And that impacts your ability to execute that movement. So again, these are two people that are really high level that have done stairs, have done ramps in a controlled environment, i.e. a physical therapy gym, that could not execute that when they went out. So what was my advice to them is the next time that that happens, slow down. Maybe you're in that phase where you just need to give your brain more time to get all that sensory information, formulate a reaction or a plan, and then execute that plan. That's my first point or take home to the first half of this video. And then the second piece that I wanna bring up as to why I gave that lengthy explanation is how do you select or choose the right activities 
to set yourself up for success as you move through the stages of recovery and you gain more and more confidence on higher level balance activities. And it really starts from ground zero, the very beginning, before you even get to a point where you're comfortable standing, you can start working on your balance. Step one is start strengthening or challenging or give you giving stimuli to those sensory organs or those sensory components and you can, again you can do that in sitting and really this is a mistake that i see a lot of people make they don't position themselves correctly in sitting so they're missing out on an opportunity to really work on a critical component of the balance system sit with your feet flat on the ground so a lot of times i see patients, even people that are higher level, that they'll be doing an arm activity and therefore they're not really worrying about their legs. And so their leg is flopped out to the side and they're kind of on the outside of their foot. So you're missing an opportunity to be getting that sensory input evenly from the entire bottom surface of your foot. So that would be for anyone, but primarily those of you that aren't standing yet, you can start working on your balance system even while you're working on sitting balance before you even start standing. And then once you get to standing, now I know some of you are probably gonna be annoyed with this or bored because I bring it up in so many videos, but bracing that even pressure distribution through the entire bottom of your foot is so, so critical. So if you go to stand up or walk and you're on the outside of your foot, you're not getting good quality, accurate information to your brain as far as where your pressure is distributed on the bottom of your foot, which helps your brain to understand where your body is in space or when it's getting off balance. So having the appropriate bracing on, super critical, super duper important. Now there's therapists that disagree with me on this point saying that you can't feel the ground as well when you do have a brace on because there's that plastic between your foot and the ground. However, my point or my rebuttal to that is if your foot isn't on the ground anyway because you're standing on the outside of your foot, then it is a mute point and it doesn't really matter. So having good bracing does improve your balance if you are standing on the outside of your foot when you go to stand up or when you go to walk. So having the right bracing on, I'll put a link for the video that I just did on bracing where I talk about the importance of this and the different types of braces based on your specific impairments. So now those are two things to get you set up for success. But now how does this all apply to those of you that want to advance to that super high level or going up and down ladders or walking on sand or walking on ice or walking on snow, anything new or unfamiliar is that you want to first challenge your body in these situations in a controlled environment. For example, in your home before you take them outside. So it requires you to be a little bit curious as to what's going on when you don't feel secure outside of your comfortable home environment so that you can kind of recreate those situations indoors and then eventually progressing that to an environment where there's more stimuli, there's things moving around you, there's things that will distract you or take your attention off of your balance. Now remember what I said earlier, there is some thinking that's going on between that information going in and what is going out. So if you're distracted and it's a new activity that might not be very comfortable for you. So recreating those situations inside, but then also being aware that you have to pay more attention to that scenario when you get outside to give your brain that opportunity to receive the information, process it, come up with a solution and execute an appropriate response. With the goal being that the more you do it, the more automatic it's going to become. So find things that you can set up in your house to throw you off balance, anything that you can do indoors to recreate that scenario to take out into the world.
So I hope all that made sense. I hope that the progression that I went through here at the end of the video is going to help you to advance to that next level in your balance recovery. If you have any questions, please leave those in the comments below. I enjoyed spending time with you all today and I will see you in the next video.